Around the year 982, the Norse explorer Eric the Red sailed further west than any European had before, and discovered a cold but beautiful land covered by fjords and glaciers, naming it Greenland. While in hindsight that name doesn't seem particularly accurate, this was during the medieval warm period, so in the southern region around Eiriksfjord where he set up his manor house, Greenland would have been, and frankly still is, relatively green. The name was likely also an attempt to attract settlers. This was arguably the first European discovery of North America. Decades later, however, the Norse would make it even further than Greenland. Around the year 1000, Eric the Red's son, Leif Erikson, sailed even further west discovering the lands of Helluland, Magland, and Vinland, the last of which was way more fertile and lush than Greenland or even Iceland. What Leif Erikson had discovered was part of modern Canada, and here the Norse would found a small settlement. But the Vinland colony didn't survive for long. As far as we know, it only lasted around a decade. So why did the Norse settlement in Vinland fail? We all know the Norse were great sailors, but their longships were generally best suited for coastal sailing, not for the open sea. This combined with the distance between Scandinavia and Vinland, or even just Iceland and Vinland, made it so the trip was extremely dangerous for even the most experienced sailors. Because of this, it was primarily just people from Greenland and Iceland that would even consider settling in Vinland, and they had a very small population, limiting the amount of Norse settlers in Vinland. On top of that, there also seems to have been some sort of dispute and skirmish with the natives, which with the limited settlers vastly outnumbered the Norse, and this may have played a role in the Vinland colony failing at around 1050 CE or so. Later in the 1300s, when the Greenland colony also died out, likely due to a cold period called the Little Ice Age, that ended the Scandinavian presence in North America. So how do we avoid this fate? Well, the Norse just immediately starting an age of colonialism half a millennia earlier is pretty much out of the question. But the Norse perhaps keeping a limited presence in North America, and going on to be the first colonial power in the Americas later on as technology advances, might be within the realm of possibility. In this scenario, the medieval warm period, instead of ending with the Little Ice Age, continues for centuries longer, making both Greenland and Vinland more appealing for colonists. On top of that, there would have to be some sort of push by some influential leaders to actively send more Norse settlers to Vinland. Perhaps some crazy ambitious king of Norway sees the potential in a fertile land at the edge of the known world. Crazier things have happened in history. Regardless of how it happens, for Vinland to last, it would have to grow to a point where it could avoid being conquered or assimilated by the natives. Now this colonization is nothing like the early Spanish colonization of the Americas, not yet. Vinland all the way up until the 13 or 1400s remains a relatively small colony on the edge of the known world with a population of around 50,000 or so, similar to Iceland. As the Vinland colony gradually grows and creates trade link between Europe and North America, it's inevitable the Americas face a major pandemic, wiping out a significant portion of the population, just like in the real world. This would allow for the Vinland colony to grow much more, as it wouldn't have to contend with as many natives. But it happening centuries earlier will also have a major impact later on. By the 13 and 1400s is when I think we would first start to notice major changes from a European perspective. Gradually Europe would become aware of a vast unexplored continent to trade with and perhaps even expand into. By this time, Vinland would most likely have been under the Danish crown through Norway, which was under the Kalmar Union, at least de jure. De facto, it would have been for centuries essentially independent. But as Europe starts to see opportunity in North America, that would quickly change. The Kalmar Union and later Denmark-Norway would for the first time try to actually capitalize on what for a long time was probably just a bit of an afterthought for Danish and Norwegian kings. They would attempt to set up colonies further south along the American East Coast, and by the early 1500s, perhaps even the Caribbean, with their Vinland colony becoming an important hub for them and other European powers trying to explore the riches of the Americas. But remember, in this scenario the pandemic that wiped out much of the Native American population happens earlier leaving time for populations to bounce back to some extent. On top of that, Native Americans would over time have gained access to the horse and old world livestock like cows, pigs, and chickens, as well as metallurgy, all through trade with Vinland. This would completely change the dynamic between Europe and Native American powers. The Mesoamerican and Incan civilizations would be far better equipped to resist any attempt at conquest by Europeans. Same goes for the remaining North American tribes that survived the pandemic. The colonization of the Americas would not consist of settler colonies that replaced the native cultures to quite the same extent. Broadly speaking, it would probably be many of the same colonial powers competing over the Americas. Although notably with the addition of Denmark-Norway being very prominent, particularly in North America, and Spain and Portugal being far less significant given that they don't get a head start. 
It's very possible other European powers like England or the French managed to capture the Scandinavian colonies in North America, making the Scandinavian presence in North America more like a Quebec or something. Although for the purposes of this video, I will assume Denmark, Norway, and a later United Scandinavia remains prominent, just to make the scenario more interesting. In the more long term, the coastal regions of the Americas would in this scenario turn into settler colonies more akin to in the real world, while the interior of North and South America, as well as Mesoamerica and the Incan Empire, managed to keep their distinct Native American cultures. There would probably never be a massive entity like the United States in North America. North America would just be way too diverse for any sort of state to unify at all. Although with that said, in the East Vinland and perhaps alternate French and British colonies could grow to rival their European colonizers at the very least. Over in Europe, the balance of powers would be fundamentally altered. Denmark-Norway having access to goods from the Americas and kickstarting the age of colonization would likely have grown to become very wealthy from the 14 and 1500s onwards. This could be just what Denmark-Norway needed to re-establish the Kalmar Union as it tried and failed to do in the real world. Although it's obviously not a given, Sweden did manage to punch above its weight many times throughout history. But I like my Scandinavia scenarios, and United Scandinavia also provides larger population, making growing a prominent settler colony all the more possible. One thing that I initially thought would become a problem for the Scandinavians is that the population would be too small to grow a large settler colony like England did. But looking at the historical population numbers, it actually seems totally plausible, assuming Scandinavia remained strong enough to keep their colonies. In the year 1700, England had a population of around 5 million, whereas Denmark, Norway and Sweden combined were at around 4 million, so fairly comparable. European politics more broadly would obviously be reshaped by a strong colonial power in Scandinavia. We're basically just adding another Britain to Europe, given the geography of Scandinavia, which almost makes it a series of islands. I think Scandinavia would be a natural ally of France, since both would have to contend with the Austrians and Holy Roman Empire, as well as Britain. France having a strong naval power rivaling the British as an ally would change everything. Britain in this scenario might not create nearly as powerful an empire. Some sort of balance of powers would probably develop, perhaps with the British growing close to Austria, Prussia, Poland, or some alternate German power. Poland would also have to contend with an even stronger neighbor than Sweden, and Russian power would be hampered by a strong Scandinavia. So many factors are at play. There would be countless alternate wars, and the Napoleonic Wars and World Wars would obviously not happen exactly like in our world. But I do imagine a series of major conflicts in the 1800s and early to mid-1900s that would completely reshape Europe, perhaps ending with something along these lines, as nationalism takes root and creates new states like Germany and Italy. I think European imperialism would eventually end, but Europe itself would still be very different. It would be more divided without the big east-west divide between the American and Soviet spheres of influence. But more significant would be the changes over in America, which would obviously have a different name in this world. There would be no United States. Instead, more similar to Europe, there would be a plethora of independent nation-states. Further south, I imagine the Aztecs would eventually be overthrown as their rule simply faced too much opposition from subject peoples. But that doesn't mean new Mesoamerican civilizations couldn't rise to prominence. They may even establish a very strong regional power based around the Mexican highlands. I could also see the Incas spreading their reach as they gain access to old world animals and technology. But that's about all for now. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Also thank you to all my members, and a special thank you to my second tier member, Lada Hino. See you all next time.